Hey, what's up guys? Bajiri here, finally bringing you the 5.4 Enhanced at Shaman PvP guy that you guys have been asking for. Gonna be going over the talents, glyphs, gems, enchants, reforging, and your basic PvP rotation. But before we get into that, I want to take a look at the pros and cons of the Enhancement Shaman class. In terms of the positive things, you're gonna have some hilariously good bursts, really solid utility, and shamans do have a pretty high skill cap. Some of the negatives, however, are that you are kind of squishy, you have very few gap closers, and due to the high skill cap, there is a bit of a learning curve. But hopefully this guide will help you overcome some of those negative aspects so you can really enjoy the fun and powerful class that is the Enhancement Shaman. Alright, so as you can see here, part one of this guide is going to be going over your talents and your glyphs. I choose Nature's Guardian for my level 15 talent. And the reason I choose that is because, number one, it is a passive ability. Whenever a damaging attack brings you below 30%, your health is increased by 25% for 10 seconds. So it's basically a built-in rallying cry. You also have a choice between Stone Bulwark Totem, which gives you a pretty substantial shield, and Astral Shift, which gives you 40% damage reduction for 6 seconds on a 1.5 minute cooldown. So... You do have options, you are more than welcome to build your Enhancement Shaman as you choose that would fit your playstyle or the demands that you feel like your Shaman needs to meet. For the level 30 talents, you have your choice of Frozen Power, which means your Frost Shock will root your opponents, which can be used offensively or defensively. You have Earth Grab Totem, which replaces Earthbind, but will root your enemies instead of just slowing them. I see a lot of Resto Shamans using this as a defensive cooldown so they can get away. I, however, choose Windwalk Totem, which is basically a Freedom Totem, which grants you immunity to all slows and snares, along with providing your teammates with the same effect, which brings us to a little bit more of that utility discussion we were having before. Now, for your level 45 talents, you have your choice of Totemic Projection, which means you can move your totems. I see this being used in conjunction with Capacitor Totem a lot, so you can use it as a targeted stun, rather than just dropping the totem and hoping for the best. You also have the option of Totemic Persistence, which means that you can drop more than one totem of the same type without destroying the other one. This does not apply to Fire Totems, however. I choose to use Call of the Elements, which means that when activated, it immediately finishes the cooldown of totems that have a cooldown of less than 3 minutes. So your Tremor Totem, your Grounding Totem, your Freedom Totem, your Healing Stream Totem, lots of useful totems that you might want to be able to use twice before their cooldown would normally be up. For your level 60 talents, you have Elemental Mastery, which is a pretty powerful haste cooldown. Gives you 30% haste for 20 seconds. I, however, choose Ancestral Swiftness, which grants you the ability to make the next nature spell with a base casting time less than 10 seconds become an instant spell. It also grants you the passive of 5% spell haste and 10% melee haste. Another really neat talent in this tree is Echo of the Elements. When one of your spells causes direct damage or healing, you have a chance to duplicate that spell, essentially causing double damage or double healing, depending on what kind of spell you cast. For your level 75 talents, you have your choice of Conductivity, which is a passive that will make your healing rain an increased duration by casting certain types of healing or offensive spells. I choose to use Ancestral Guidance which grants you an ability on a 2 minute cooldown to have all of the direct damage or healing that you do heal you and your party members for 40% of the damage you do or 60% of the healing. And we'll talk about that a little bit later because it can become very powerful when used in conjunction with some of your offensive cooldowns. And the last choice you have in the level 75 talent tree is Rushing Streams, which will amplify the amount that your healing stream totem heals for. Now, your level 90 talents as an Enhancement Shaman are all pretty neat and pretty powerful. The first option you have is Unleashed Fury, which means that whenever you use Unleashed Elements, depending on what kind of enhancement you have on your weapon, you will gain additional effects. For example, if you are specced for Unleashed Fury, Flame Tongue Weapon will now cause your target to take an additional 30% damage from Lightning Bolt and 10% damage from Lava Burst for 10 seconds. With Wind Fury, it gives you a chance to trigger Static Shock with your melee auto attacks. With Earth Living Weapon, it will grant your next single target healing ability an additional 50% healing. Frostbrand will give you an additional 50% movement speed, and Rockbiter will give you a 40% damage reduction for 5 seconds. Primal Elementalist will make your elementals 80% more effective, as well as granting them unique abilities and make them under your control. However, as cool as those talents are, I choose Elemental Blast, which will allow you to harness the power of the elements and blast your opponents 
for a ton of damage every 12 seconds, as well as granting you a mastery, haste, or critical chance stat increase. Now once again, you have the freedom to build your shaman however you want, and if those talents seem neat to you, even if they're not the talents that I have used, feel free to give them a try and let me know how it goes. Absolutely the same can be said for your glyph choices. There are many interesting glyphs, what you decide to use, completely up to you. In terms of my glyphs, I used to use Glyph of Lightning Shield, however, now it only grants you 10% damage reduction for 6 seconds after using it, so I'm probably going to switch that out. However, I do like the Glyph of Shamanistic Rage, however, I would encourage you not to use that against Affliction Warlocks, because it will cause you to dispel the UA, silence yourself, and deal tons of damage to you as well. However, it does cause you to be freed from any sort of magical debuffs when you use that, which can be effective against things like Deep Freeze. You can use it as a second trinket in that case. I also use the Glyph of Healing Storm, which increases the direct healing that you do depending on how many Maelstrom stacks that you have. So, at 100% Maelstrom stacks, that means 100% extra healing effectiveness on your direct heals. You also have some other choices that you might want to invest in depending on what you're fighting or what you prefer. I sometimes like to use the Glyph of Hex, and I am going to switch that out right now because I don't think the Glyph of Lightning Shield is really worth it at this point, so I'm going to go with Glyph of Hex. Sometimes you'll also want to use the Glyph of Purge, which will cause your Purge spell to purge two buffs, but also put on a six second cooldown. And you can absolutely take a look at some of the other glyphs, see which ones you like, and give them a try. But the reason I'm using these glyphs right now is because it gives me a good mix of CC utility, off healing utility, and having a second trinket or the ability to dispel myself is always very, very nice. In terms of my minor glyphs, they're all personal decisions. The glyph of Lava Lash is very, very helpful if you want to avoid breaking your partner's CC. However, I'd probably take that out for things like Battlegrounds or anytime you want to have extra AoE. Next up, we have part two, gems, enchants, and reforging. Now, the way I set up my stat priority is I want to make sure I have as close to 3% hit as I can. You don't want to be under 3% hit, but you also don't really want to go that much over it. Same can be said for 4% expertise. After that, I put most of my available stats into agility if possible, and then I favor mastery, then crit, and haste is a bit of an afterthought. How I go about this in terms of my gems is like this. In terms of my meta gem, you have a couple different options. I kind of like the agility and extra crit damage one, just because it's more damage. But you do have the option of using the stamina plus stun reduction, especially if you're an orc, it can get you out of some pretty sticky situations and allow you to be in the fight more often than not. You also have the option of the PvP power plus resilience meta gem, always a good option, with a good balance of offensive and defensive stat increases. In terms of my other gems, for all of my red and prismatic sockets, I will put in 160 agility. For my yellow sockets, I will go with agility and mastery. For my blue sockets, I will put agility and PvP power. I know there's a lot to talk about in this section in terms of my reforges and my enchants, and even though I've already told you my basic philosophy with my stat priority system, if you have any specific questions, you can always check on my armory. I'll put a link in the description for you, but I'm also scrolling through my gear as you can see, so you can take a look at the enchants and reforges that I'm using. I'll go ahead and just pick it up right here. On my bracers, I'm using the 180 agility enchant, and I reforged out of haste into crit. On my bracers, I have enchanted those with 170 mastery, and I have reforged for mastery out of hit. For my belt, I chose the crit and mastery belt, so I don't have to do any reforging on it at all. And I did make sure to use a purple gem in there, so I did get the 60 agility socket bonus. For my legs, I reforged out of haste in favor of mastery, and I also enchanted them with the 285 agility and 165 critical strike enchant. For my boots, I once again chose the Critical Strike and Mastery boots, so those boots did not require any reforging at all, and I added the 140 Agility and Minor Speed Increase enchant them as well. For my rings, on the Ring of Accuracy, I opted to reforge out of hit and into 248 Critical Strike, and on the Ring of Cruelty, I opted to reforge some haste in favor of Mastery. Now when you buy your trinkets, you have your choice of the Proc Trinket or the Unused Trinket, I personally prefer the proc trinket because it's active for the same amount of time but grants you a much bigger stat increase. For your free action trinket, I recommend you buy the medallion of cruelty and reforge some of that crit into mastery. 
And that will bring us to part three of the Enhancement Shaman PvP guide, Keybinds and Macros. Now, I've been mentioning this throughout the guide, that all of your choices that you make are up to you, and that especially applies to key bindings. These are the key bindings that I like to use. My middle mouse button applies a frost shock, my alt middle mouse button will cast a healing surge, and if you want to follow along, these buttons are the ones on the bottom of my action bar. My earthbind totem is bound to my shift middle mouse button, I have storm strike in a macro bound to my just mouse wheel up. And what that macro will do, in addition to casting Storm Strike, it will set my focus for me, and it will also cause my pets to attack the target that I'm attacking. The reason I'm having a set focus command in this macro is because Storm Strike is an ability that I'll be using a lot. And if there are enemies that I want to have as my focus target that use stealth abilities, it will practically automatically reset my focus without having to worry about it. I have Lava Lash bound to Mouse Wheel down, Unleash Elements to Alt Mouse Wheel up, and Elemental Blast to Alt Mouse Wheel down. I have my Ascendance and Burst macro bound to Shift and 1 on my Razor Naga. And what this macro does is it will use Vermin's Bite, which is an agility potion if I have any. It will cast Ascendance while casting Blood Fury, and if I'm spec for Elemental Mastery, it'll pop that. It will also pop Spirit Walker's Grace and my Stormlash Totem. Bound to C, I have Shamanistic Rage. Bound to 1, I have Ghost Wolf. Bound to 2, I have Grounding Totem. Bound to 3, I have Tremor Totem. And if you're noticing, these abilities are a little bit similar to my Warrior, right? You know, with Shield Wall on C, Spell Reflect on 2, Zerker Rage on 3. So it kind of helps me with my automatic reactions that have been conditioned from my time playing my Warrior. So anyway, we have Tremor Totem on 3, as I mentioned. And now on 4, I have Cleanse Spirit which is useful sometimes if you like to dispel curses from yourself if you're fighting warlocks. Just a helpful thing to do, helps yourself out, and definitely helps your healer out as well. Bound to R, I have my Capacitor Totem. Bound to F, I have my Healing Stream Totem, which is also part of a macro that will use a Health Stone if I have one. Now part of the problem with this macro is you do want to have Healing Stream down all the time, but you might not want to use a Health Stone all the time. So I would encourage you to have separate binds for those two abilities. Bound to G, I have my Lightning Shield. Bound to T, I have my Free Action Trinket. And bound to X, I have my Ancestral Guidance. As we talked about earlier, that is a talent that you do have to choose. So perhaps if I didn't decide to spec for Ancestral Guidance, I'd have, say, my Health Stone there. And instead of my Healing Stream Totem Health Stone macro. Just something to think about. My Wind Shear is bound to Alt number 1 on my keyboard. I have Spirit Wolves bound to Alt 2 on my keyboard. My Fire Elemental is bound to Alt-3 on my keyboard, and my Earth Elemental is bound to Alt-4 on my keyboard. My Alt-R and Alt-F keybinds are both Cleanse Spirit macros for different members of my party. So for example, Alt-R is the spell party number one, Alt-F is the spell party number two. That's helpful if you have to dispel your teammates' hexes. Alt-G is bound to Call of the Elements, another talent that I chose that allows me to reset totems that I might want to use again before their cooldown is up. My Naga Button 7 is my Symbiosis Bind. Z is my Healing Tide Totem. Now a lot of these binds have been on my keyboard. Now we're going to move over to the binds that I have on my Naga. On Naga Button 1, I have bound my Flame Shock. On Naga Button 2, I have my Focus Wind Shear. And that's a macro that I'll show you, although it is a simple focus macro, there's not a whole lot to it. It's just slash cast target equals focus wind shear. Very, very standard focus target macro, and you'll see that on my focus hex in a moment. My normal hex is bound to Naga Button 3, and on Alt Naga Button 1, I have bound my Lightning Bolt macro. And the way that works is I only have Lightning Bolt being casted when it is an instant cast. On Alt Naga Button 2, I have my normal purge button. Now, on Alt Naga Button 3 is my Focus Hex, and once again, that's just a pretty simple Focus macro, which will incorporate a slash cast target equals Focus Hex. On Naga Button 4, I have bound Earth Shock. On Naga Button 5, I have my Spirit Walk. On Naga Button 6, I have my Fire Nova. That's a really fun ability to use once you spread your Flame Shock with Lava Lash. On Alt Naga Button 4, I have my Searing Totem. On Alt Naga Button 5, I have my Windwalk Totem, and on Alt Naga Button 6, I have my Ancestral Swiftness. I do also have some other binds on the far side of my screen. The first one that I have is my Weapon Imbues, which I didn't talk about yet. 
I usually use Wind Fury Bane Hand and Flame Tongue Offhand, which also reminds me that I use Double Dancing Steel on my weapons, but you do usually want to have at least one weapon that has a reduced duration disarm enchant on it as well. On Alt Naga Button 7, I have my Focus Purge macro that I just showed you. On Naga Button 8, I have my Water Walking. And on Alt Naga Button 9 and Naga Button 9, I have bound my Ancestral Spirit and Spirit Walker's Grace buttons in case I have to pull off a clutch Spirit Walker's Grace res, which hasn't happened, by the way. <laughs> At least not yet. I am ready for it. <laughs> But that pretty much finishes up my keybind section, which brings us to part four, your abilities and your rotation. Now I use the word rotation here because it does actually benefit you to use certain abilities in a certain order. However, mostly you do have a priority system like most classes in World of Warcraft. Now the way I tend to think about my Enhancement Shaman and what I'm supposed to do while playing an Enhancement Shaman is, you wanna make sure you manage your totems well, keep down your Searing Totem, pretty much as often as you can, keep down a healing stream totem also as often as you can, practice grounding important spells for your teammates, as well as making good use of your tremor totem to help keep yourself and your teammates out of fears. In terms of your basic damage rotation, however, you want to make sure you have a flame shock applied as often as possible, have your searing totem down, you're going to start with a storm strike, then lava lash, then unleash elements, which you might have a maelstrom proc by then, and if you do, you can then use Elemental Blast. And the reason why you want to use those abilities in that order is because using Storm Strike will grant your next Lightning Bolt, Shock Spell, or Elemental Blast an increased 25% chance to crit, while Unleash Elements will give you an increased damage on your next Fire Spell, which includes your Elemental Blast. So, by using Storm Strike, then Unleashed Elements before you Elemental Blast, you're granting it 1, an increased chance to crit, 2, an increase in damage. Something to keep in mind about your Lava Lash is that its damage is increased depending on how many stacks of your Searing Totem buff you have as well. So you can wait for 5 stacks on every Lava Lash, if you'd like, for some pretty serious damage. Now, things to keep in mind is that you will probably end up running through your entire sort of 4 ability combo and then find yourself with plenty of globals to use. You can use those globals to refresh your Searing Totem, your Healing Stream Totem, maybe throw a few purges onto your enemies, or drop other useful totems for your teammates. Another one of the weaknesses that I sort of feel like shamans have is that you have so many things to do and everything costs a global. So one of the things I feel like lends itself to shamans having a high skill cap is learning how to manage your globals most efficiently. And that's the sort of thing that you do improve on with practice. You begin to have mental timers of when you should replace your totems. You eventually learn how to weave things like purges and hexes into your normal damage rotation, along with increasing your awareness so you have globals to spare when you need to drop those clutch grounding or trimmer totems. As you continue to improve, your rotation of offensive, defensive, and utility abilities will begin to weave seamlessly together into a very formidable force. Now, in terms of your offensive cooldowns, you have your Fire Elemental Totem, you have your Ghost Wolves, which also act as a defensive cooldown, since they heal you for percentage of the damage they do. Now, watch this section of the video closely and rewind it if you have to. The way you set up your burst as an Enhancement Shaman is of course popping your Fire Elemental, popping your Ghost Wolves, and using the rotation that you normally would. A Storm Strike, then a Lava Lash, followed by an Unleashed Elements, followed by an Elemental Blast, which will give you a Mastery, Haste, or Crit buff. While that buff is active, you want to Storm Strike as soon as it's off cooldown, and as soon as you Storm Strike, you want to pop your Ascendance and Storm Lash Totem macro, because your Storm Strike cooldown will be reset by Ascendance, allowing you to Storm Blast instantly with the last remaining moments of your Elemental Blast buff. If timed correctly, the cooldown of your Unleashed Elements and your Elemental Blast should be up again, just in time for your second Storm Blast during Ascendance. And the reason you want to time that with the Elemental Blast buff, so your Storm Blast will either hit harder if it's a Mastery proc, or have an increased chance to crit, obviously, if it's a crit proc. The Haste one, it's okay, <laughs> but you're really hoping to either blast somebody with a Mastery proc, or crit the heck out of them with a crit proc. And as with any burst, it's ideal to set up this burst when you have a Dancing Steel proc and a proc trinket active as well, just for maximum damage. So just to run back through it one more time, your offensive cooldowns are essentially Storm Lash Totem, Ascendance, Blood Fury if you're an orc of course, 
Spirit Wolves, and Fire Elemental Totem. Those are your main offensive abilities, and you have the option of spreading those abilities out if you want more consistent damage, but for maximum burst, you kind of want to use them all at the same time, except for Ghost Wolf. You might not want to use Ghost Wolf all at the same time in case you want to save that for a defensive cooldown. In terms of your defensive cooldowns, Shamans have Shamanistic Rage. You can consider Healing Stream Totem as a bit of a defensive, but Healing Tide Totem is a really big heal for yourself, as well as Ghost Wolves. Now, in terms of your Ancestral Guidance, you have the option of using that during your Ascendance if you need to heal yourself, or you can use it with Ghost Wolves in order to really amplify the healing your Ghost Wolves cooldown will do. In order to further increase the healing of your Ghost Wolves, you can also Glyph for that as well. So that provides you with some pretty insane self-healing with Ancestral Guidance and Glyphed Ghost Wolves. You can also use Ancestral Guidance when you're popping Ascendance, because all the damage you're doing during your Ascendance combo will translate into healing on your team. So, it's not the ideal situation, but sometimes if your team's on the back foot, you can both counter pressure with Ascendance and help out on the healing with that Ancestral Guidance ability. So, as you can see, a lot of the Shaman's offensive and defensive abilities kind of weave together, which allow you a lot of options in terms of how exactly you want to use them. Using Ghost Wolves as an offensive cooldown gives you more damage, allows you to stay offensive. If you decide to use Ancestral Guidance during that as well, you're going to be a pretty unstoppable healing and damage dealing machine. But then that might leave you a little bit vulnerable later on down the line. All in all, Enhancement Shamans are an incredibly fun class. I really had no idea what Enhancement Shamans were about prior to leveling one, which actually was a big motivation in terms of picking an Enhancement Shaman as a class level in the first place. But like I said, I've had so much fun playing an Enhancement Shaman, and it is very obvious to me that I have a lot to learn and a lot to improve on. But that's a challenge that I embrace, because honestly, the playstyle itself is very, very enjoyable. So the learning process will be fun. And as you continue to improve, and as you continue to play your Enhancement Shaman better, it is incredibly rewarding. So, I hope this guide was helpful for you all, if not entertaining. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Before I let you go, however, I do want to say a huge thank you and congratulations to Marco Romo. I was originally planning on giving away the Razor Naga from the Death Knight Nothing to Lose video on the Fury PvP number 16 video that's going to be coming up soon, but one, I think it's been plenty long enough since that giveaway has been going on. Number two, more giveaways the better, right? So, congratulations once again to Marco Romo, and be sure to like, comment, and perhaps share this video, as well as be subscribed to my YouTube channel for a chance to win a Razor Naga of your very own. I'm very grateful to be working with Razor at this point, and I'm very, very excited to share that opportunity with you guys in the form of giveaways, so here we go. Once again, thank you all so much for watching, good luck on the giveaway, and keep up the good work. I'll see you next time. Peace!